Hey everybody, Movie Reviewer Next Door here, and I'm back with another review. And this time, I saw Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. This is a 1989 horror fantasy film directed by Stephen Hopkins, and it stars uh, Erica Anderson, uh, Kelly Jo Minter, Danny Hassel, Joe Seeley, and Robert England. In this film, um, just a second. Sorry about this. In this film, Alice, having survived the previous installment of the Nightmare series, finds the deadly dreams of Freddy Krueger starting once again. This time... Sorry. The taunting... Ah! Sorry, I'm having a hard time reading. The taunting murderer is striking through the sleeping mind of Alice's unborn child. His intention is to be born again into the real world. The only one who can stop Freddy is his dead mother, but can Alice free her spirit in time to save her own son? So, what did I think of Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child? I don't hate the film, but I can definitely say it's one of the weaker entries. Um, and I didn't... There's a lot of obvious issues with certain scenes. Certain scenes don't feel like they pan out the way they should, or they feel kind of like, you know, a bit hollow, and I'll get to that, but um, also this is going to be a spoiler review because I do have to talk about plot-relevant stuff. The cast. Lisa Wilcox plays Alice Johnson. I think she is at least at least as good as she was in the first and in the last film i really enjoy alice as a character it's nice to see more of her um still has some badass moments in this film erica anderson plays greta gibson she's uh a, a, a new friend of alice's from school uh she's kind of a like beauty queen type because her mom's like pushing her into it um I really liked this character, and I wish she got a bit more to do, because uh, Erica, I've never seen her before. Um, she really wasn't in a ton. I'm guessing she was more of a TV person, but uh, she, I think she did a pretty good job, actually. She played a believable character. She had a nice emotional scene, and... Yeah, I liked her as a character. Uh, Kelly Jo Mentor plays Yvonne. She's another friend. She works at a hospital. I liked her. I thought she was good as well. Danny Hassel plays Dan Jordan, um, who's her Alice's boyfriend. Um, I still like him. He works just like he did in the last film. Joe Seeley plays Mark Gray. He's a new char another new character that's one of Alice's friends that's like a comic nerd. He's making his own comics and stuff and um but he like doesn't like the sight of blood. Uh I enjoy the character as well. Um and Robert England as Freddy Krueger. As always, I think he does a good job playing the character. But one thing I can definitely say is weird about this movie is the mixture of Freddy being more and more humorous as a contrast to the very serious things that happen in the plot. And I guess I'll start with that first as an issue I have with the film. It's not that these movies have ever been like 100% serious. But this one does deal with some pretty tough issues, um, like with Greta. She's like a beauty queen. Her mom won't let her eat what she wants to eat. She 
constantly feels like she has a leash on her. Um, there's even a point where a character is like, oh, uh, could maybe you could get an abortion so that the Freddy will stop using your baby's dreams. And I'm like, uh, I was as a joke going to say that. I was as, as a joke going to say, oh, God, what if they actually did like a, a abortion thing here? But. Like, okay, case in point with the tonal whiplash. You have this whole sequence with, again, spoilers. Danny on the motorcycle getting ripped apart and all that. And then he's in the car, crashes into the truck. And then Alice ends up running outside to, like, you know, to see if he's okay. And it's supposed to be this, like, heart heartbreaking moment and then he, his body like comes up and he says hi Alice want to make babies and I get it these movies have never been 100% serious but that's not the right moment to do something like that like a character that again admittedly didn't have a lot of a personality in the last film he was more stereotypical jock but it's a character that's like important to the main character and Alice sells the act or excuse me, Lisa Wilcox sells the acting, but then it turns into that. And that's the thing with this movie is you'll have like moments that are, that could be intense or just creepy. And then a lot of them get demolished by this switch in tone. And I'm not big on that. It it just doesn't really work. It yeah, it just doesn't. It just doesn't work for what the film's going for, or what I think the film is going for. When you go from a scene of a bunch of inmates, well, I mean, it's not on screen, but a bunch of inmates raping uh, a nun, to a fucking like stop motion freddy baby crawling into a freaking into the emaciated corpse of freddy and then being reborn like it's it's very odd and i just don't think it fits that well at all um another thing the nightmare sequences A lot of them are very... Okay, there's three main ones. There's the one with Danny. or I'm, I'm talking about specifically the nightmare sequences that end up in death. The one with Danny. The one with Greta. And the one with... Um, Mark. Those three... The ones with Danny and Greta were heavily edited by the MPAA. So a lot of footage from them is missing. So you have very obvious jump cuts in the middle of Greta's especially. Where, well both of them especially. Where it go, where she goes from like having a little bit of food in her mouth to her cheeks are about to pop. And... It's it looks so disjointed and it's very it took attention my attention away from the movie itself because I was like, OK, obviously something's missing. And with a series like this where you have disgusting practical effects from people like Screaming Mad George, especially in the third one with the marionette bit, which is so fucking gross and creepy and it works to go to this where. There's barely any gore or barely any, like, violence in the dream sequences. And especially with the Greta one, there's her, like, um, because how it goes is she's, like, at the table and talking about, like, the mom won't let her eat, won't let her eat all, uh, every other day, but this day she's letting her eat because there's guests or something. And the whole point is, like, stuffing her mouth full and, like, the binging and purging thing. But 
force feeding her and then scooping it out of her stomach. But the way it's shot and the way it's edited because of the MP the MPAA told them to edit it down because it was apparently too violent. You just magically you have her being fed a little bit, cut away, cut back, her cheeks are like super full. And now she has a hole in her stomach that, through this edit, we didn't see Freddy do. So it it's very confusing, and it, it yeah, it's distracting. I know I, I knew about these before watching this again, but it's still distract a big distraction from the movie I'm trying to watch. And, and you know, and with the Mark one, it or not Mark with Danny it, it's it's a lot of the similar stuff there's like skin that falls off the, that you don't see there's a lot of blood that you don't see and it what could have been a really cool death is instead kind of a bit of a mess like the thought is there I still think that the one for um, Mark is still pretty cool the set design is very imaginative, making it look like a comic book. But apparently that one was cut down to just nobody's ever seen like a... Or, or they wanted to do more and they, the budget wouldn't allow it. Which is insane because the last film had so many more dream sequences and I think it did a bit more with them. But anyways. Um, there's also... Uh... I I I don't think the film fully utilizes the interesting idea of using the unborn baby's dreams in order to attack these new people that just live on Elm Street. I think they could have done a lot more with that. I don't know who this director is, Stephen Hopkins. I recognize movies he's directed. He directed Predator 2, The Ghost in the Darkness, Lost in Space, Judgment Night, which is apparently an underrated film. Um, Life and Death of Peter Sellers, Under Suspicion, Blown Away. He's done a lot of well-known and well-regarded films. Um, and just something about the direction here felt pretty flat for the most part, especially given the last film. You have the cool like camera angles. You have the cool editing. You have some really good music as well, and this film is lacking a lot of the... like. 80s charm 80s horror fantasy charm of the last film as if they wanted to go this full like more like down to earth or more darker toned plot then they should have gone for it but it feels like it wants to be both a goofy freddy movie and a serious freddy movie and i just don't think it fully adds up but on the bright side, the the set design is still pretty great. It's impressive stuff, especially the um. I'm guessing this was also optical effects as well, a hundred percent. The the like a dolly and or not dolly, whatever the guy's name is that did uh the like stair never ending stairwells or whatever. That sequence was really cool. Um, a lot of the stuff inside the old mental asylum looked really creepy. I don't know where the fuck they found that asylum. If it, they had to have found one, but yeah. Um, the score, uh, was pretty good by, uh, Jay Ferguson. There's, and, and there's some strong performances again from Lisa Wilcox and, um, Freaking Erica Anderson, I think she did a pretty great job. Um, I don't think anybody was really bad. If if I have to signal single out anybody, I'd say probably Joe Seeley as Mark. Like at some times he kind of gives off similar vibes to um well people from the past films. Um that kind of do this, like, bro, 
like that kind of acting. But overall, this is not a Nightmare on Elm Street movie that I would watch unless I was like just doing a watch through of the series. But it, it's it's decent enough, but very obviously has issues stemming from like the MPAA and production and it does kind of come off as a bit of a mess. But yeah. That was my review of Nightmare on Elm Street um part five, The Dream Child. If you've seen the film, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you have any recommendations, put them down there as well. And uh movie reviewer next door out.